So welcome back everybody. This is Night Flight and today we are going to talk to Tony Sayers again. His website is transcendingtimes.org. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, we both know that this is a very controversial subject and uh, most articles, most people are over the moon with Kundalini and Reiki. And uh, yeah, here and there you find some critical stuff. So we will dive into the critical stuff today. So Tony, welcome back. How are you? Yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm uh struggling through every day as <laughs> this this crazy place and uh yeah i'm i'm really just trying to see the fun in it all um at the moment um some of the things that that happen in my daily life with these people just you just got to laugh at them and uh, i'm finding that's a, a real medicine to be able to cope it really is clown world i mean i don't it's no exaggeration when i call it clown world it really is a circus out there and I think you know you've got to poke some fun at fun at it. Otherwise, you'll just go insane, and and you've got to, you've got to find the humour in it. I'm hoping this is my last time round, so you know might as well make the most of it. Hey, so and they hate that you know these entities and you know the the people that control it. They don't want us like laughing and being happy and uh, finding humour in things. So I'm trying my best to yeah to just smile through it all and yeah. Do what I can, really. <laughs> you couldn't yeah. make it up, could you? <laughs> yeah, that's so true. So, Tony, Reiki. Yeah. A lot of people are fully over the moon with Reiki. And, um, yeah, when you type it in, most of it is really, really positive. And um, yeah, here and there, there are a few drops of, yeah, wait a minute, <laughs> for me, it was not so wonderful. Um, yeah. So so what is Reiki? Well, yeah, I mean, it's obviously very heavily entwined into the, the, the lovely new age movement, the rainbows and unicorn farts that everyone has got caught up into and uh, get stuck there, which is uh, what I refer to as the... Um, the second layer of the matrix where people are having a, a, a waking up to certain truths and then they're being funneled into into the new age movement which really uh, keeps people passive and stands keeps people from speaking up and just think high vibes and everything's going to be all right and you're going to be in the new earth just over that rainbow bridge over there just keep those vibrations high don't look at anything negative god forbid so it tie it ties in heavily with with that whole new age agenda, and uh, I would I would just start with the name. I mean, you know, the etymology of the word reiki. I mean, when you're raking something, you're you're kind of like taking something, aren't you? So, for me, the the name straight off the bat is um, it, it, it's suspicious, and uh, I have to say, uh, I, I was <laughs> I, w I was into reiki years ago when I was. I wasn't really heavily into the new age, but I did do, go through the process of my Reiki one, Reiki two and Reiki three. So at one point I was a Reiki master, right? And I hate that term as well, because it, it really ties into like spiritual ego. Like, like I'm a Reiki master, like it doesn't sit right with me. And even at the, at the time that I remember thinking, I don't know if I like that, that, that title of, of master seems quite kind of like slave and that's that kind of thing so um so yeah I, I have been through the process so um but ultimately uh down or the years uh, working in energy and clearing stuff and and sort of understanding how false light beings work and how there's they use this kind of like false light frequency i would describe it um, which uh, very much is like a spiritual high, which makes people addicted to it. And it can make you feel good in the moment, maybe for the, that hour or for, for that day. But ultimately, there is like the inevitable crash, um, whether that comes a day later or two days later or a week later. Um, 
there's there's that there's that feeling of oh maybe I need to do it again or something like that and um, you know it, you can feel like quite off and I've had a lot of clients down the years that have told me that they got into Reiki and then after a while they were really not feeling good something felt off and then they some of them started like hearing voices and stuff like this so um again on the surface when you look at it it all seems innocent sweet you know healing each other we do have that uh, potential we all, we all have that potential but the problem is is that we're hooking into what i describe as a false white light energy grid so this isn't organic this is set up and when you set your intention to uh hook into that grid you are then accessing that false light that, that false high energy um so what i say to people is you can do i mean i wouldn't even call it reiki you can lay hands and you can heal people, but you just literally set your intention to use your own energy and let it flow. You don't need any uh, false light grid. And and I know through the um, through the symbols, the uh, these entities they feed on the the Reiki energy as well. So it is triggering for people. Um, I get that, like all this new age exposure is, but it really is something that people might want to reconsider. And I've heard it so many times uh, down the years where people have said to me, like they booked their Reiki course, but something just fell off. They didn't go through with it or they did the level one and something fell off and they didn't go through with it. And I would, I would say that that's the, their intuition that is, you know, tapping into actually this isn't what we're told. So um i describe it very much like um like a drug like ecstasy you know where you where you have that incredible high and then of course there's that crash and this is why you know you have to keep doing it over and over again like balancing the chakras and all this other stuff that you need to do um and ultimately you know a lot of these people that are into not just reiki but all these other new age modalities they spend hundreds and thousands of dollars and two, three, four years down the line, they're still, they're, they're not feeling any better. In fact, they're feeling a lot worse many times. So we have to, we have to ask ourselves, you know, where is all this getting us? And I think we're at a stage now where everything needs to be put on the table to be questioned. Um, even things, and maybe I've said this in, in our podcast previously, but even things that we call traditions, you know, we've had things like Reiki and yoga and meditation and all this stuff for God knows how many thousands of years. And people say to me, yeah, but Tony, it's it's old. Tib Tibetan monks used to do it. Well, OK, where is all this stuff getting us? Because right now we, you know, we, we literally have no rights and freedoms left. And we've been doing all this stuff and all these new ages are doing it and they're not getting anywhere. So how, how is it actually benefiting us? Be benefiting us? Um, and so, yeah, Reiki, um, yeah, just to underline my point, is is tapping into the false light energy grid, which I think they are using this false light energy grid at the point of death um, where people are being love bombed. Um, if you look into uh, near death experiences um, where people come back or, you know, trick back or whatever, um, they often describe this incredible um, feeling of like love energy um and i think that it's that same frequency that is being used with reiki that incredible false high um which is really cruel when you think about it um that they use to try and hoodwink and and crow um, crowbar people back down and it's very difficult to turn away from that um you hear it in these ndes uh you know they feel that incredible overwhelming love energy and then obviously, you know, Jesus or Buddha or whatever their flavor of savior turns up at the pearly gates. And and we know what the rest of it goes like, you know, oh, Judith, you were a good person, but you hurt Dave back in, you know, 2005. And, you know, look what you did, you know, and they make you feel their pain. You hear this all the time. They make the the, the experience that go, go through the pain of the person that, that, that they cause the issues with <laughs> but they say they're not judging 
they're not judging, but they're going to make you feel all the pain of what Dave felt. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this false light energy grid, we need to be very aware aware of because it's very alluring. Uh, not only in this lifetime with all these new age modalities, I would say Reiki is not the only thing that taps into this. There's probably other modalities as well, but also at the point of death, you know, this, this incredible um, luring feeling, this energy that is, is encapsulating people to come back down. So it is a kind of a morbid topic and a triggering topic for so many people. But I mean, it goes back to do we want to feel good in the moment, which is what the new age is about, just feeling good? Or do we actually want to get out of here and actually understand the levels of manipulations and deceptions that are being used um, to trick us? Mm -hmm. um, so I get that it's uh, upsetting for people to, to hear this information, um, but it is what it is. Yeah. So it is said that uh, you are tapping with Reiki into universal energy. Has mm. that been your experience? Um, well, <laughs> I, I would say my, my personal experience when, when I did it was that when I look back, there was red flags. I mean, you know, my, my Reiki teacher, she was lovely. And uh, I, I wonder sometimes if she still follows me. <laughs> Probably not <laughs> when she knows what I talk about. But she was like her and the people that were attending these uh, training sessions were, were always talking about channeling angels as well. And, and the guides come through on Reiki sessions and, and all these entities. And, uh, you know, looking back now, I can see that they're, they're totally, yeah, totally brainwashed by it all. And, uh, Yeah, my, my, my experience was I, I did feel the initial highs of it all, like everyone does. Um, I would say that certain things felt off. But I always remember that, you know, a day, two days afterwards, I'd feel really tired and I wouldn't feel great. Like It wasn't like this Reiki session that I had liberated me uh, energetically. Um, so... Yeah, but I've heard uh, a lot worse stories from from other people that have, you know, been uh, been practicing it for for a long time. So yeah, I'm not saying don't don't lay hands. You know, it's probably it would work a whole lot better if people just used their own intention, laid hands, and allowed their energy to flow. Um, that's going to be way way more um, effective than tapping into a false light energy grid. Um, so I'm not telling people. You know, you can do your own version of, of, if you want to call it Reiki, but just use your own energy. So I'm not even saying, look, you can't heal people. Of course you can. Uh, we all have that ability. Just don't tap into that energy grid is what I'm saying. The only energy grids you really want to use are your own and nature, nature's energy. Anything else I would avoid. So, Yeah, yeah that reminds me a little bit of what... Um... There is his name escapes me. There's a physicist here in Germany, and um, he has written a couple of books, and um, those are about quantum healing, but from a scientific point of view. And then he has a smaller book with, uh, yeah, basically a couple of exercises, how to tap into uh, subspace and um, how you can. Um, go into that energy and um, yeah and then you concentrate on uh, what is yeah annoying you where you feel pain and whatever and uh, but you know there is no no master involved no initiation there there are no symbols yeah and, um, so if uh, people are interested in those things i would say to look into quantum healing is really a good idea yeah <clears throat> what i found interesting <clears throat> um i read an uh, interview with a reiki practitioner and um he reported that he sometimes has uh, clients who come to him after their initiation 
and something went horribly wrong. Mm. And uh, so he said that sometimes he has to do a lot of clearing work on those people simply because um, some of them, yes, they have been initiated into Reiki, but also into something else yes. that does not belong there. And some of them have actually never been initiated into Reiki, but into a complete different energy. And that is then what causes the problem. So, and he calls it entity infestation. Absolutely. So, so it is possible, even he, as he, and he is still practicing. Yeah. But even he is aware of those um, possibilities. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the, to get to the different levels, you actually need to go through a ritual. Um, a, a literal ritual I don't know if you've been through the process yourself but you, no. there's yeah there's like three rituals and I can't remember exactly but you know the the Reiki master comes around and she taps you taps your shoulders and says all these words and and, and it's it's a literal ri uh, ritual and, and I've heard it time and time again where people have had these um, you know these different rituals uh, to to get their different levels for Reiki, and that it's almost like they felt something else come in. And um, yeah, it's it's just another manipulation, really, where they've they've made it all so fluffy and light and love. And it, there's there's actual, I think there's actual angel Reiki and crystal Reiki and all these different versions of it as well. Um, and yeah, really, you're you're just opening yourself up to these entities. Your 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 friend there is spot on, although he's kind of running uphill if he's clearing and doing Reiki still. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you're literally opening yourself up. You're opening your energy up um, to whatever those rituals are really programmed to to open you up to. And as we know from a lot of the New Age, it's probably not too good when you go deep into it. But you see it as well. Um, one thing I would encourage people to look out for, and I do this a lot in my New Age reviews, is that when, when someone is tapping into that false light energy grid regularly, um, it is something that you can almost see in their eyes. And, and I describe it as the lights are on, but no one's home. It, there's like a glazed, there's, it's like glazed over. It's very subtle in some people. But again, if you look at some of these uh, new ages, it's almost like they're, they're there, but they're not there. And they're, they're very kind of absent is the, the best way to, to describe it. I remember once when I, I was in the UK and I went to Brighton, which is like the new age capital of the UK. God knows why I was there. Can't remember now, but um, I think I, I, went, I, went, I went to some kind of conference and there was like spiritual people there. And, and I got talking to this guy and he was, he was big into Reiki. And I remember as he was talking, I was like looking at his eyes and I was like, he's talking, but it looks like there's no one behind him that like there's, that there's no one there. It was really weird. And this is before I, I, I know what I know now about it. But I remember thinking that something's not right. Something's off. Um, but, you, but you'll see them a lot. They'll talk like this, you know, everything's love and light and you just keep your vibrations high. It, it's just vacant. Um, and uh, now I can spot false white light and I can feel false white light energy Im immediately. I went to review um, a, another prom prominent new age, Amanda Ellis. She's got a huge following. And I put her, I put her video on. And within seconds, I felt off. I could feel that. And then uh, as I as I was playing the video, it, it turns out that she was embedding this, uh, this frequency. And actually could be Kundalini as well. I can't remember what it was, but it was definitely false light. And I, was, I felt it within seconds. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I don't like that. And so I had to clear myself. And so this is a real big problem because people are sometimes watching things on YouTube or online. And if that person is working with false light and energy or, or entities and stuff like that, 
you know, that stuff can be transferable. So we need to be really careful with the information that we're consuming, particularly when it comes to like frequency videos and things like that. And this goes um, even further where um, I remember two years ago, two or three years ago, uh, I, I experimented with binaural beats and um, I was like, oh, I'll just try them. And I, I kid you not, for about two months after that, there was something wrong with my brain. I don't know what it was, but I, I felt like um, my brain was really slow. And, and eventually I found it was like an implant, an etheric implant. But I linked it back to the time when I was doing these binaural beats. It took me ages because we, when you're clearing this stuff, there's this kind of like law that if you can find where it comes from, it's easier to clear it. It's like a law of identification. And I was checking, 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 checking. I was like, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I was like, mm, I want, what, what have I done differently the last couple, uh, couple of months? I wonder if it was from the binaural beats because that's where it started. And so when I checked in around the binaural beats, that's where this implant had came in, uh, had come in. And, and other people have then since told me that they've also felt off when listening to certain things like binaural beats and everything like that. So I'm not saying that everything's bad. I'm just saying that we, we, we really need to be careful about what we're consuming and what we're opening ourselves up to. Mm. Yeah, at the end of uh, that interview that I just described, I had the impression a lot of it depends on who is initiating you. And it might even be that the person itself doesn't know that mm. he or she is not initiating into Reiki or that there is a, a different energy attached to it, that they are well-meaning people, yes, but do not have the discernment to see, yeah, okay, but here something else is running here as well. So and and I find there are so many Reiki teachers out there. And then again, you can do it via the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And honestly, people have no clue who those people are. Yes, there might be uh, some people that even do it intentionally, mm. you know, to yeah. uh, give you an entity. Yeah, uh, well, for sure. I think there's both sides of the coin there. There's people that are, are infiltrated and maybe they're controlled opposition. I think a lot of these big new ages are. I think there's a there's a circle of a, a circle of these core new ages that have huge followings that um, are, are definitely infiltrated and they know what they're doing. Um, but then there's also the people that, which I would suggest my Reiki teacher, she was a lovely woman. And I know that she, what she thought she was helping people and she had good intentions. So um, there's both, both sides of the coin here. Um, but ultimately, if someone's infiltrated with an entity, it's really not important whether they know it or not. So they they just are. And, and that's why we need to be discerning. Yeah, you are correct. I was just distinguishing it. So, you know, so that people do not go off in the comment section <laughs> that we are demonizing yes. everybody. Yeah? Yeah, there, yeah. there is a difference. It might be that uh, people do not even know that they themselves have not been initiated in the right Yeah, way. I mean, most people, they go to the new age and because it's all innocent and sweet, then they're never ever going to think for one moment that this stuff is is dark or demonic or what, whatever it is, uh, because it's just not packaged that way. And we know that the stuff that they package in the new age is incredible the way they've marketed it all it's it's just they've marketed some of the most evil things as as all this love and light and so it flies under the radar this is why it's so dangerous the new age so so much of it flies under the radar because you're thinking well how can rainbow colors be evil how can angels be evil how can chakras be evil how can all this stuff be evil when it all looks so good and feels so good <laughs> and this is the problem that I've had down the years trying to wake people up from this crap because it just people are so emotion emotional about it all because it makes them feel good it all this woo-woo it's 
you know, when especially if people, some people have had a lot of trauma in their life, they don't yeah. want to hear. They don't want to hear someone like me say Reiki's like bad or angels are bad. Um, but those people, are, they're going to feel good in the moment, but they're not going to feel good when this stuff gets used against them. It's probably at, to, at death as well. So it does yeah, take. But, but you know, on the other hand, we all had experiences in our daily uh, life let's say you uh, have a lovely meal happened to me and uh, two hours later <laughs> i had a food poisoning yeah. Yeah? yeah so or you are having sex feels great as well you might end up with a venereal disease. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that argument, because it looks good, it feels good, there cannot be anything wrong with it. That that doesn't fly anyhow. No, no, but, you know, people people don't want to go that deep, do they? We, we were just talking off, off air, off, off the interview about, you know, people just... They they just want to feel good. They 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 just that's that's literally all they want to do. Um, mm. And so when you come along and burst their bubble, you know you get all the the pushback. So, but it is what it is. Some people will take it on board and investigate it further, and and others won't. So mm. it depends on how interested in truth you are. Mm. Because you just mentioned this uh, tapping on the shoulder. Um, I also that was also a German website and the woman who reported it allegedly is clairvoyant I don't know I cannot judge that I don't know her but um, she reported that when she looked at people after the initiation that she sometimes could see um, some of the symbols above their shoulder, mm. not on their physical body, in their energy. Yeah. Body, yeah. And um, that in that symbol was an entity sitting and sucking energy out of that particular uh, individual with something that resembled a straw. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They feed through the symbols. Yeah, mm. it's 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 like a contract, a, a contractual thing. You allow you allow yourself. You open up to this ritual. I wish I could remember more about it. I mean, I, I had three of them back in the day. I've, I've obviously cleared them all now, but um, the, it was it was all very yeah, very weird. And um, I have no doubt that that's that's what's happening. They're, they're feeding through the symbols. Um, and again, I make the point in that you can heal people. You just lay your hands, set your intention, and you're away. You don't need all the, you know, all the fluff around it. And you don't need mm. you don't need initiations. Yeah, and that is something where I have to say people should really think about in general, not just Reiki. Think about it twice. What you are getting initiated into. And by whom? Mm. Because in all honesty, you never know with what you are going to end up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really important topic, really. I mean, it's really good to unpack it like we have because it, it, there are so many people that, that are having detrimental effects from, from all of this stuff. Mm. Maybe not straight away because they have to give you a bit of sugar. I mean, I've got so many stories. Like I think I've said before, there was a there was a woman going back to sort of false light entities, and she uh, she was channeling Archangel Michael, and Archangel Michael helped her find her missing cat. So she had all this belief in him. But then on the flip side, he was getting her to run this. Mass, she was very prominent in the new age so she was like a figurehead and she he was running this scheme to get her hooked into all this like uh false light grid in in some healing new healing modality and then ever since she followed him after that everything went wrong in her life you know all the advice she was getting from him 
and she ended up losing everything and she ended up hooking a load of other people into this you know false light modality um so they give with one hand and they take with the other this is what pe people don't understand they have to give you a bit of sugar to keep you invested because if they just did what they did no one would do it so um they they sprinkle this these turds with glitter mm -hmm. yeah so what would you tell somebody that says yeah but i feel great every time i get a reiki session and i have no problems at all because that is usually the argument that comes yeah i mean uh, yeah I, i hear that one a lot and i mean the, the 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 fact is that a lot of people if they feel so great why do they keep needing to have all these reiki sessions and why do they need to keep balancing their chakra and then their their root chakras out and then it's their heart chakra and so you know on the surface they might feel great but when you when you go deeper you know how how really um, further forward are they so and i would argue that yeah maybe maybe they're just feeling that spiritual high and whether the crash comes today tomorrow next week next month inevitably there will be a crash yeah yeah and, and as i said not everything is good just because it feels good what's that <laughs> saying not everything that's gold is that glitters not everything yeah. that glitters is gold i love yeah. that I mean, yeah. if I could, if I could sum up the New Age movement in one sentence, it would be that not everything that glitters is gold, and uh, they they glitter everything that's not gold <laughs> to make it look like gold. <laughs> so our next topic, Kundalini. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there again, uh, very controversial, uh, but you find a little bit more of you know personal experiences of course it's hard to tell on the internet if that is real or if people are making up the story but um yeah it's a snake energy it's an entity you're allowing your <laughs> your hope isn't it's very simple you're opening yourself up to serpent entities um, or a serpent entity, a particular serpent, serpent entity. Serpent entities are one of the most common em entity races out there, and there's different variations of it. You've got the four-headed snake, you've got wing serpents, um, and and Kundalini is a, 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 again, it's like some kind of ritual where you're opening up your energy, and then people literally, when you when you when you actually listen and read what people's experiences. It literally is a possession. That's what they're describing. And because the entity then kind of has uh, not maybe fully control over someone's consciousness, but has a, is directing it very strongly, when you question it, that it will immediately defend the experience. And this could be what we were talking about earlier with the Reiki, the people that say they have great stuff. Because they've opened themselves up to these entities, these entities are, are always putting voices in the head. And, and so the, the entity will also get triggered. And so it's going to jump to the defense of the modality. So this would apply to Reiki, and it definitely applies to Kundalini. And one thing it really applies to is the whole plant medicine crew with ayahuasca. I mean, that's another cult. I mean, that's another show we could do. These people will not hear that there's anything bad with what they've done or what they're doing. And when you you don't even have to look too far under the surface to see that it is really bad, a lot of what they're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, so 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 you'll find that people that have these Kundalini experiences, they'll just a lot of them, a lot of them are bad. They'll say uh, they were they're really, really traumatic, like physically, like their 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 body gets taken over they get sick i mean this is entities can make you sick like really that, that's a thing um and and if you have underlying issues that they can amplify that as well so um 
so when you hear these experiences, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound like a good thing. Um, mm. And the people that do say that it was a good thing, I would say that they're probably possessed by this snake energy. And, and they're saying that because they're trying to defend the whole modality. Um, but yeah, I mean, that also extends into Kundalini yoga, which again, it's really going to trigger people when you talk about their, their beloved yoga, you know, the, 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 uh, the Cobra pose, a lot of these poses that, that it's the archetypes of the poses that open people up to certain entities, Hindu gods, Hindu gods are entities. And, um, you know, the background in yoga is, is Hinduism and to yoga means to be yoked with, to merge with, to merge with what <laughs> is what I would say. Um, uh, and, and yeah, again, people, people won't like it. They don't want to hear that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with stretching because that's the people's immediate comeback is the health benefits. Yeah, there is incredible health benefits from stretching. You can stretch without making those entity poses. And, and Kundalini yoga is um, a very prominent um, part of the yoga modality, very popular. What I have noticed with uh, people that practice Kundalini yoga is they have a very, very strong sexual energy serpent energy serpent entities are very sexual and um i i've i've noticed that a lot with people within kundalini yoga uh, circles same with uh tantra um and all that stuff it's it's creepy as hell i find it creepy as hell and um yeah the the, the kundalini awakening kundalini yoga yoga anything serpent and energy I mean, there's so much, uh, Judith, you know, all these people in, in the new age that, that work with dragons, dragon entities, dragons are, are an entity race, uh, but people, people, people don't want to give it up. They want to keep going with it. So, um, yeah. I, um, when you said, uh, that, uh, people are saying they, uh, love their, um, uh, kundalini awakening i have watched some um you probably are aware of Sadhguru. yes yeah he was he was at the wef the other day he was what he was at the world economic forum i saw ah, him okay. okay yeah yeah, he's, yeah. He's really for truth <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah but i found it quite interesting um what he had to say in terms of uh, Reiki and Kundalini, um, yeah, okay, he's not totally against it, but he is also not, yay, <laughs> yeah. And um, I also watched uh, another uh, video where two gentlemen in India were talking about this, and the guy who got interviewed, him, he has a PhD, I guess he was, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, expert in energy well, I don't know but definitely both said that you have to be ready for the fact that your life your regular life that you had up to that point is being totally tossed mm. and that it might be difficult for you just to function among other people did that ever do you had that experience with uh, people that did kundalini yoga i mean if you do kundalini yoga that doesn't mean that your uh, uh, your kundalini has uh, risen yeah yeah, uh, yeah that that might take a while yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard stories where it's completely changed people's personalities, like okay. completely into, into different, different people. Or I get emails where they've, they've done this uh, ritual and they've just, yeah, they literally tell me that they, they mm -hmm. feel possessed. They, some of them wake up to it and realize what they've done is really bad. Um, it depends how strong that person's, I don't know, willpower is, but other people, 
really uh, allow that entity to take over and are dominated by it. And then they parrot the rhetoric. They they become sort of uh, marketeers for these things. So they come, they become marketeers for Kundalini Yoga. They become marketeers for Reiki. The plant medicine people then become marketeers for the, the ayahuasca and all of that stuff. Um, I mean, there's people here where I live right now. I, I mentioned it on my recent live. Um, there's there's a, there's quite a few plant medicine people that have moved in to to this area, and and I saw I've seen some of them around, and they walk in around, and I can see that they're looking possessed. And these people are taking ayahuasca or cambo cambo nearly every day. You try telling them that it's not good or hang on your friend there looks like she might have an attachment their their solution is to drink more ayahuasca or take more cambo so they're they're, they're literally possessed by um by by the i would say the plant itself you know that when you look at ayahuasca it's very grabby very takey and you know it, it actually kind of like strangles trees and stuff like that and it's almost like that that same energy is coming through people as well. And, and they become marketeers. They become, it, well, these things are all cults in the end. That's what they are. Anything like that with a, a very strong, rigid, defensive and belief system then becomes a cult. And, and others, as they, as they go through these processes and rituals, the cults get bigger and bigger. Mm. So when someone like you or I come along and say, hang on a minute, what you're doing might not be too good. It's like you get you get jumped on. So, um, but it's it it's all uh, yeah, it's all entity interference. Yeah. Do you uh, know Richard Grannon, His channel. Is he the talks about the narcissist? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and he has a video where he talked about his ayahuasca experience. And um, he was very uh, straightforward and he said, I have to tell you that the, if you want to do such a thing, you really have to think about it. Whom I, you know, there are all so many shamans <laughs> running oh, around. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, a weekend course in shamanism. Great. And <clears throat> well, he said that when the drug kicked in, um, the ayahuasca plant or entity, you could say, showed him a pair of uh, feet and a little bit of the legs, but <clears throat> they were brown feet, mm. not a white skin color. And then he was asked, what do you see? And um, he said, yeah, I see brown feet. And then he was told, so what is this telling you? And he, he was not, he didn't know what, what that uh, was aiming at. And um, he had been told in that moment, these are not your feet, correct? And then he was told, so this plant is not for you. It is only for the people that live here. Right. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's quite interesting. Yeah, there's, this, I've heard down the years so many stories of, of people where they've listened to the advice of this plant or the entity, probably the entity that's masquerading as the plant, Mother Ayahuasca, they call it. Mm followed the advice life turns upside down everything goes to crap <laughs> um I, I hear it so many times whether it's with angels or friendly friendly aliens or when they've taken ayahuasca or because the thing is uh, when you when you take these things people people think that they're when they go into the astral like that they they think that that they're seeing everything they're seeing the the, the encompassing everything in this universe when actually all they're doing is they're going into the astral 
Like we as humans, we go way beyond the, that layer of the matrix. That's the, that's just one layer of this matrix, this computer game. We go way, way beyond it, beyond that. But when people are going into the astral and they're meeting entities and they're getting all these visuals, they're, they're thinking that they've seen everything. And you can you can have certain like breakthroughs um, and insights. I'm not saying that it's totally bad, but we shouldn't, when people take these things, they shouldn't think that, oh, they've seen everything there is now and they've got all the answers. It's most of the stuff that goes on in the astral is manipulation and deception. So all this advice they get in and downloads that they get, I would say probably coming from entities. Yeah. Um, do you know about how Harald Kautz Weller? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I know, I know, I know his name. I don't know of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, before we went. Uh... Uh, online, I uh, read something that he wrote about, and he wrote about um, uh, children with autism in uh, connection to uh, parasites in the colon, and that uh, these slime fungi are actually uh, the same that <laughs> the same that the uh, tumor snake. Mm. Yeah, uh, the tumor snake is uh, releasing in the body. So yeah. I found that very interesting. And uh, if you, um, yeah, the, if you type it in tumor snake, then what is attached to it? A goddess. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oh, don't get me started on goddess energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Everyone's. A <laughs> Everyone's a frigging goddess. Oh my god, cringe, cringe fest. I need to make a video about that. Yeah, goddess, goddesses, Egyptian gods, these are all entity races masquerading. And have you noticed none of these people were ever like a bin man or a, I don't know, a road sweeper? They were always like a goddess in ancient Egypt in a previous life or, you know, something exotic. They never, they never say, oh, I was uh, I swept the roads of London in the 1900s. It's always like, oh, I was uh, in in ancient Egypt. I was Osiris or something like this, you know. But yeah, this, I remember one uh, one evening uh, when I was living in Costa Rica, I I actually saw the uh, entity set in in the in the room that I was I was in just for a split second. I just got the so uh, yeah, these these things are just entities, and of course they they market themselves and they package themselves so well. Um, that's what they do. They masquerade. I mean, when people really need to grasp the fact that these things are master master masqueraders, I mean it's incredible. I, I think I told the story on my recent live. Um, I was clearing someone, and. Um, I'm really into like diving and, and I love like whales and sharks and uh, like anything in the ocean. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's my passion. And I was clearing someone and all of a sudden I saw a shark and for a split second, I was like, Oh my God, it's a shark. Right. And then I realized it was this entity cloaking itself as a shark, right. To try and try and hide from me. Or I would think like, Oh, it maybe it's like an animal spirit or something. And I was like, you bastard. <laughs> I cleared it. But th this is how sneaky and deceptive they are in, in the fact that, and it goes back to whatever your flavor is, like whatever you're into, they can market themselves as that. And for me, in that moment, this entity knew my weak spot was the ocean, right? So it's like, I'll try that as a last chance saloon. And for a really, really tiny split second, it almost, it almost got me. Um, and this is why it's so important to give up these rigid belief systems, you know, because whatever you're into, they'll market themselves to to, to that. So, yeah, and that uh, this uh, goddess is a fierce one and a very fiery uh, energy, which of course goes along with the Kundalini experience. And um, yeah, for some people. 
that uh, experience was not so nice because uh, they literally had the impression that they are burning. Yeah. Although they didn't. And um, yeah, so... Some people never recover. Some people never recover from this Kundalini awakening. Mm. Uh, it's it's really sad. In really extreme cases, same with ayahuasca. Um, some, sometimes it would just break people to the point of no return. But they don't tell you about these stories. I mean, ayahuasca, on ayahuasca retreats, people have died. People have literally died. Do you hear them talking about it in, in the ayahuasca community? Do you hear them talking about dangers of entity attachments? The the dangers of like, if you've got a lot of trauma? Um, is there like an aftercare service for people when they when they open themselves up and spill all their trauma everywhere? No. Mm. Yeah, you are probably familiar with Graham Hancock. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, he is quite fond of ayahuasca. Um well, he's, and... he's a he's a shill, isn't he? I mean he's on Netflix and yeah, I mean <laughs> Yeah, and uh so his uh his experience was quite positive with uh ayahuasca, but definitely don't do it as a party favor. No. Yeah. And I, I cannot stress that enough. You have to know who is brewing it, what are they brewing, and who are you with? Yeah, but all these things, in my experience with people, become addictions. I mean, I've I've worked with and seen so many people down the years that they don't just take ayahuasca once. They mm -hmm. they take they they end up taking it like eighty, a hundred times, like however many. All these things are, are what I call spiritual addi addictions, because what are they? They're ways to escape ourselves. Um, and so it all comes down to inner work, really, because when you do that inner work, the desire to escape yourself with all of these things subsides and you can just sit with yourself and be OK with it. But the problem is people want to get out there and connect with this and connect with that because they're so like don't want to be in there but and I, and I get it you know it's a, we're, we're this is a tough experience this human experience being in this physical body is tough and um, you know I, down the years I've wanted to escape but I found on my own journey the more I've done that inner work the less that I have any desire to like alcohol the lot I don't need any of it and um, I think I think that's really the key point in all of this and you know, a lot of people just, they don't want to do the inner work. They don't want to spend the time to, to, to really, truly heal themselves. They want to go to the jungle, take a cup of jungle juice and think that that's going to solve 20, 25 years of deep trauma. It doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that. Nature doesn't work like that. It's like these people that they want to eat junk food for 25 years, get obese and have like heart disease. And then they want to take a pill from from big pharma and and and, and hope that's going to heal them it just doesn't there's no quick fix to these things mm. um so you know these set th these things are set up within the new age because they know that people have a lot of trauma and they know they're going to gravitate these things that are gonna they, even even like my god the people i've met down the years that are addicted to meditation retreats like every every week they're going on a on a meditation retreat. Again, it's escapism for me. Mm. I just had an interview with a very, very lovely lady. She has overcome her eating uh, disorder, bulimia. Yeah. And um same thing what you just described. And the funny thing was she was contracted by Nike. She was one of their world uh, athletes. And, uh, you know, she was living in Hollywood. She was a, um, a, a aerobic instructor. And so from the outside, she had everything going for her. But at the same time, she was bulimic. Mm. And um, she was able to hide that for 16 years. Until one day it came all crashing down. 
And uh, so what she did, she said, I, I was driving in my car and I had these masses of junk food and I was stuffing my face with it. And she said, I felt so ashamed. And then sometimes when uh, people, <clears throat> yeah, probably <clears throat> who who is in the next car, if you're in a traffic jam, <laughs> you know, do they know me or whatever? Yeah, and then, um, of course, you go home and um, she never could make herself throw up. So she had to drink something that made her throw up. And she did that to the point of uh, where she was throwing up uh, blood. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because there was never enough food in her system, her body, of course, went into this um yeah survival mode yeah where the body stores everything that it can get and it stored a lot of the fat that she was shoveling in with uh the burgers and the french fries and funny enough during that time she was 12 kg heavier than mm. she is now right right you need that yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, eating is another way to escape yourself because mm -hmm. in the moment you're stuffing your face, you feel good. You're, you're kind of not even in your body. I mean, sex, food, alcohol, drugs, like it's all there. Um, so, yeah, when when we when we all start to do our inner work, then we, we're not going to feel the need to gravitate to, to all these things that, that just really just paper over the cracks and of course entities will turn the volume up on all of this as well you know your entities will if your thing's alcohol or food it'll be like go on just have a burger just just have another glass of wine it'll be the little whisper in the ear because they're always trying to encourage you to stay off your path and encourage your bad habits and waste your time so you know that the entities will hook into our unhealed wounds and and amplify them um and, and makes things worse so yeah 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 so tony we have probably ruffled some feathers today yes yes as normal <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but i mean like i say i just uh, you know what what do people want do they want to want to feel good or do they want to get out of here <laughs> that's where we're at that's where we're at right now do you want to feel good in the moment you know, keep on with the, all these things uh, or uh, do people really want to get out? And so that's what I would say to people and just do your own research. You know, you don't, don't, don't like, don't listen to me and, you know, you know, I don't have all the answers, but I think I've got a good handle on how this stuff works. Um, and yeah, I just, yeah, wanted, uh, and, I just I would and I would assume that you see a lot of the uh, fallout from that in your line of work uh, all the time emails every day every day of people where they've yeah spent hundreds of thousands of dollars they're no better off or their life has just collapsed or they were channeling something or they were downloading something or they ended up in a cult or they ended up in like getting abused by some like yo like you just I, I, one day i'll write a book one day I'll write a book. I mean, it's it's crazy. And, and it's one of the reasons why I, I do what I do on my channel because I hear it all the time. And, and yeah, I want people to become sovereign and become their own leaders and, and not look, out, look, look outside themselves for all these things that are going to lead them astray. And there's nothing wrong with getting help, but it's getting the right help and being discerning about it, which is what we were saying off air um so i'm not against getting help from people yeah. um but the problem is and the problem has been is that we've just been going to whatever feels good in the moment not showing enough discernment and and that's where people are getting unstuck so question everything is what i would say to people uh, even things that are old and traditional um and even things that might make you feel good in in the moment so I have a hard enough time to find a good doctor in this matrix, you know? Is there a good doctor? Actually, yeah. 
Yes, <laughs> some, some, yeah. But think, th th that is like, you know, finding a needle in a haystack, really. Yeah. yeah. So let alone talking about uh, initiations and what have you. Um, so mm -hmm. it's hard to find a good good person let alone a doctor <laughs> but yeah i mean it, it it is what it is and they've packaged it all incredibly well i always say like you have to tip your hat at the way they've done it all i mean they are they are the kings at uh deception and masquerading and hoodwinking people and tricking people that's why it's a matrix yeah uh, so it's being aware of their tricks and manipulations. If you can become more aware in this physical lifetime, you're going to be less likely to be hoodwinked and manipulated at death. Uh, and it's so incredibly vital that we do, we do this in this lifetime because we know that they use a memory wipe at the end of uh, our lives if we get hooked into the light tunnel and everything. And you don't want to learn learn everything, but still be hooked into angels or Jesus or something. And then that gets used against you. Your memory's wiped. And then you're back down here for another thousands of years. Because that's really where we're at. This is in, the importance of it. This is a real opportunity, a window of opportunity for people to finally get out of here once and for all. And if you go through that memory wipe system, it could take you another thousand lifetimes to learn what you've learned up to now. So just be very careful. If you have a rigid belief system about anything, um, you know, connections to loved ones, things like connections to pets, I'm not saying don't enjoy them in this physical life, but just leave that at the door. You know, when it's time, just leave it all at the door and, and just, yeah, exit. <laughs> Head for the exit door. <laughs> yeah, that is a very important um yeah, I would say exercise in general, letting go of stuff yeah. or whatever it might be. And that is uh, not very easy for most people. No, no, we get we get very we get so attached to uh, everything in this matrix. And and it's good. It's good to have these uh, life, these physical lifetime attachments. I should I'm not saying that we shouldn't get close to people or we shouldn't get close to our fathers our mothers our grandfathers our pets our our children whatever but just know that when it comes to time to leave this ai system has got your algorithm down to a t and be like all right judith cats that's how we're going to get judith her cats are going to show up right mm -hmm. and if you're there at the you know you're still attached to them in this lifetime and you go you pass and you're like oh where am i going oh, there, oh there's my cat Oh, and then all of a sudden you're you're back down. Your memory's been wiped because your cat's hooked you back in. That was an entity masquerading itself. Mm. It sounds so evil, and it really is. It sounds like it's it's not a very nice message to put across to people, um, and it's very very sad. But what what do people want to do? You know, mm. For me, I want to get out of here as much as I love my mum, my dad, you know, my family, my niece, my nephew what have you, uh, I will leave that all at, all at the door <laughs> when it comes, when that time comes. And who knows, maybe outside of this matrix, we can meet up later on down the line. I mean, anything's possible. I think, I really do think anything is possible. Um, infinite possibilities once we get out of this matrix. So maybe we can create a world where we can all meet up together and all have a good laugh at what happened down in clown world. <laughs> Yeah, great. So perfect final words. And um, so that was it. Night flight for today with Tony Sayers. And we see you all next time. Bye bye.